On November 30th, at exactly 9.49 p.m. Eastern Time, something unusual happened on the Sun. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory has been tracking an active region that appeared on our star's northeastern limb, firing off multiple M-class flares throughout the week. Then it unleashed an X1.9 blast, one of 2025's strongest eruptions. Scientists recorded radio blackouts across half the planet. But here's what has space weather forecasters concerned. This region is just getting started, and Earth is now in the firing line. I'm Marcel, and today we need to talk about what happened and what's coming next. So let's start with the facts. At 9.49 p.m. Eastern Time on November 30th, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, which monitors our star continuously, captured this dramatic image. What you're seeing here is an X1.9 class solar flare erupting from the sun's northeastern limb. Now, for those who might need a quick refresher, solar flares are classified by strength. C class are minor, M class are moderate, and X class, these are the big ones. The most intense flares our star can produce the number after the X tells us how powerful, an X1 is strong, an X2 is twice as strong. This X1.9 falls right in between powerful enough to cause immediate effects on Earth, and those effects were immediate. The radiation from this flare traveled to Earth at the speed of light, taking just eight minutes to reach us. It slammed into our upper atmosphere, ionizing the air and triggering what's called an R3, or strong radio blackout across the entire sunlit side of the planet at that moment. That meant Australia and Southeast Asia experienced significant disruptions to high-frequency radio communications. We're talking about aviation frequencies, maritime communications, amateur radio operators, all affected during that window. Now, here's where it gets concerning. This X1.9 flare didn't come out of nowhere. It originated from what solar physicists are calling an active region, essentially a cluster of sunspots where the sun's magnetic field becomes twisted and unstable. Think of it like an overstretched rubber band. Eventually, something has to give. When these magnetic field lines snap and reconnect, they release enormous amounts of energy. That's your solar flare. But here's what has NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center paying close attention. This active region is just now rotating into view from the sun's far side, which means for the past several days, it's been firing off flares that we couldn't see directly from Earth. November has been unusually active for our star. NASA recorded six X-class flares last month alone, most of them coming from a single persistent active region. In fact, November produced the strongest geomagnetic storm of 2025, with auroras reported as far south as Mexico. I covered some of these events in previous videos, and many of you commented that you'd seen the northern lights from locations where you'd never witnessed them before. That's the level of solar activity we're dealing with. The X1.9 flare from November 30th was also accompanied by what's called a coronal mass ejection, or CME. That's a massive cloud of magnetized plasma that gets hurled into space. Fortunately, modeling from NOAA shows this particular CME wasn't Earth-directed. It was angled away from our planet. That's good news. It means we avoided the geomagnetic storm that would have followed. But we might not be so lucky with what's coming next. As I'm recording this on December 2nd, NOAA's forecast shows a large group of sunspots rotating into an Earth-facing position. This is the same region that produced the X1.9 flare, and it's not done yet. The Space Weather Prediction Center is currently forecasting a 20% chance of M-class flares and a low but non-zero chance of additional X-class events over the next several days. Those are significant odds when we're talking about events this powerful. Now why should we care? Well, in our modern interconnected world, we're more vulnerable to solar storms than ever before. Let me give you some context. Back in March 1989, a geomagnetic storm knocked out power across Quebec for nine hours, six million people without electricity. The cause? A coronal mass ejection that induced currents in the power grid's transformers. Today, the stakes are even higher. We depend on GPS for everything from navigation to precision agriculture to time-stamping financial transactions. We rely on satellite communications for internet, television, and phone service in remote areas. Aviation and maritime industries depend on high-frequency radio for long-distance communications, especially over oceans where there's no cell coverage. When an X-class flare hits, those systems can go dark. And our satellites themselves? They're sitting right in the path of these solar storms. The radiation can degrade solar panels, corrupt electronics, and in extreme cases, permanently disable spacecraft. As one NASA scientist put it during their recent briefing on space weather, we're not trying to cause alarm, but we are trying to promote awareness. And that awareness matters. The good news, we're better prepared than ever before. Unlike our ancestors who witnessed the 1859 Carrington event, we now have an early warning system. 
NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory watches the sun 24-7, capturing images in multiple wavelengths every few seconds. Multiple spacecraft, including ESA and NASA's SOHO mission, provide different viewing angles. When a major flare erupts, scientists know within minutes. When a coronal mass ejection is hurled into space, we can model its path and predict if and when it will hit Earth. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center issues alerts to power companies, airlines, satellite operators, and other critical infrastructure managers. They can take protective measures, rerouting flights around polar regions where radiation is strongest, adjusting satellite operations, preparing power grids for potential fluctuations. So what should you take away from all this? First, the X1.9 flare on November 30th was a significant event, but our systems handled it well. Radio blackouts were temporary, lasting minutes to perhaps an hour in the most affected regions. No satellites were lost, no power grids failed. Second, we need to stay aware. This new active region rotating into view has the potential to produce more flares over the coming days. If you're interested in space weather, and clearly you are, since you're watching this, I recommend bookmarking NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center website. I'll put the link in the description. You can check current conditions, forecasts, and even sign up for alerts. It's a fantastic resource. And third, while solar storms do present challenges, they also give us something beautiful. If this active region does produce an Earth-directed coronal mass ejection in the coming days, we could see auroras much farther south than usual. So keep an eye on the forecasts. The sun is entering a particularly active phase of its 11-year cycle. We're likely to see more events like this X1.9 flare in the months ahead. I'll be tracking them and keeping you updated here on the channel. If you found this breakdown helpful, let me know in the comments. Are you concerned about solar storms or fascinated by them? And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. We cover these space weather events as they happen, along with the broader story of what's happening in our solar system and beyond. This is Marcel. Stay curious, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next video.